In this video, I'm going to show you all you need to know to program a REV 2 meter distance sensor in Java. This is a fundamental skill that lets your robot see and react to the field, making your autonomous routines more reliable and giving you a serious competitive advantage. As a robotics teacher for over a decade and having led teams to national championships and winning Aspire Awards, I can tell you that using sensors effectively is what separates good robots from great robots. I'm going to run you through the hardware setup, then we'll jump into the code line by line, and we'll finish off by showing you some practical examples that you can take on and use in your own robot today. So taking a look at our control hub here, I have a testing bench set up. If you follow through my videos so far about setting up this test bench, you don't have to follow through this next section, you can just go right into the programming. Otherwise, we're going to be using the rev distance sensor that is down to the 2 meter. Well, keep in mind, this code will also work for the color distance sensor, but the distance sensor is good to about 2 meters, whereas the color distance is only good to about 5-ish centimeters in my experience. So to be able to set up the configuration file, you just wire this into a JTC connector into an I2C port, and I believe I've wired this one into port number 1. So we're going to go ahead and collect the meatball menu here on the driver hub. Select Configure Robot. Go to your, I'm using my test bench configuration file, my control hub portal, and control hub. I'm going to come down to I2C bus number one, and I've called this one sensor underscore distance and is a rev two meter distance sensor. Now, of course, if you're using a color sensor V3, you can go and select that. Go ahead and select done, 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 save. Okay, and then the last thing, make sure you activate your test bench so that it will restart your robot and it actually knows your configuration file is. Heading on over to our desktop here, I like to create all of my mechanisms inside of a separate package to help keep our code a little bit cleaner. So I've gone ahead inside team code, I've created a new package here called a mechanisms package. And then inside here, we'll go ahead and make a new class. We'll call this one our test bench distance. Uh, you, of course, can add this to whatever mechanisms class you have. I recommend you separate your packages up into things like your linear slides, your outtake claw, your intake claw, just to make your code a lot cleaner. Inside this class, we're going to make a new distance sensor called distance. Oops, sorry, this is going to be a private distance sensor called distance. And then we're also going to go ahead and put in a new initialization method for our class here. So I'm going to make a new public void init, and we are going to call in the hardware map with hardware map inside here. And then the only thing we have to initialize inside here is our distance sensor. So we're going to say that our distance is going to be equal to uh, hardware map dot get. And then our class is going to be distance sensor dot class with a comma. And then inside of a string here, we had to put in the exact name. So I called it sensor underscore distance. Now in your robot, you're probably going to make a more descriptive name, whether it be the, sen the distance sensor on the front of your robot, or whatever that is. So now we've got that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a getter function or a getter method so we can actually grab whatever our uh, state of that distance sensor is or however far away it is. So we're going to make a new public double called get distance. And then inside this, we're simply going to return distance dot get distance. And we have to pull in a distance unit here. You can use centimeters, millimeters, or inches. I prefer centimeters personally, but it doesn't actually matter what you end up choosing. That's it. That's how you're reading distance sensor. Let's go ahead and actually practically use this now. So inside of our team code, I'm going to go ahead and right click, make a new Java class. We're going to call this one distance test. And the distance test is going to extend the op mode. And then our op mode always needs two methods. We're going to have a public void in it and a public void loop. So to start of our class, we need to make a new instance of our test bench we just made. So we're going to say that our test bench distance called bench is going to be equal to a new test bench distance. Inside of our initialization method, we need to call that method from our test bench. So we're going to say bench dot init, and we're going to call this one with hardware map. And inside of our loop now, we can just simply add in a telemetry, oops, telemetry dot add data. We're going to say distance 
And then after that distance, we're going to put in our bench dot get distance. So we have created a new instance of our testing bench. We have initialized the hardware, and then we're simply just going to print whatever that data is. Before we send this over, we're going to say at teleop, so it actually pops up, and let's go ahead and run this on our control hub. We've connected it to our control hub via the USB-C to USB-A cable, otherwise it will not actually work. And let's grab a hard object that we can sense this against. Now keep in mind with these distance sensors, they work best if they're going against hard objects and if there's not a lot of ambient light. In my room, there's a ton of ambient light right now because I've got a light shining directly onto this. So it is going to reduce the distance of mine a little bit. Same thing with highly reflective objects. They're going to make things a little bit more accurate as well. So we're going ahead and create that. We can right, currently see that my phone that is recording the testing bench is 30 centimeters away. And as I move this object closer, we should be able to see that our driver hub gets to about 6, dis six centimeters, 10 centimeters, 10.4. And as I get farther and closer away, we can see that that distance value is changing. So let's get into a practical example here so you can really help solidify some of that knowledge for you. So what I want you to do is, for our first example, print too close if your object is less than 10 centimeters away okay so let's go ahead and add this in what i like to do is because robots are sensing thinking acting machines i like them to always sense at the start so i'm going to make a new double and i'm going to call this double distance and i'm going to assign distance this is going to be equal to the value of bench dot get distance then if distance is less than 10 we're going to say slammer shot add line too close and then we'll just get rid of our add distance and that's how i would go about pushing that so i hope you found this helpful in learning how to use a distance sensor for ftc robotics if you got more questions about this let me know in the comments down below otherwise Best of luck this season, and I hope to see you out there.